Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Yesterday, I did a video demonstrating how to achieve amazing detail in an image. That technique involves shooting a bracketed set of images and taking that bracket into Photoshop to achieve that detail. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. But, is there anything you could do if you don't have a bracketed set of images, you just have a single image? Well, Yes, there is. I'm going to teach you a technique I learned from the German photographer Calvin Hollywood. Calvin calls this technique freaky amazing detail, and it really is freaky amazing. Um, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to Calvin's YouTube channel. You could check him out, but he is German, and most of his videos are in German. That's why I think most of my audience probably haven't seen this technique before, so I'm going to demonstrate it now. Now, it doesn't matter what type of image you have. I actually saw Calvin do this on a portrait, and it works great on portraiture. It also works great on macros like this one, or in a landscape image, or anything in between. What you do is take that image into Photoshop. Duplicate the background layer twice by hitting Command-J on a Mac twice, or Control-J on a PC twice. Now, we have our two copy layers, so we have three layers total. And what we want to do is take those top two layers and put them in a group. To do that, click on the top one, hold the shift key down, and click on that middle one so they're both selected. They go down to the bottom in that little folder down there, click on that folder, and now they're in a group. Now we want to do what we want to do is change the blend mode of the entire group. So make sure you're on the group, and you want to change the blend mode to overlay. Now, open up the group by clicking on this little triangle to roll it open. Then click on the top layer in the group. It's going to be called Layer 1 Copy, if you didn't change the name of it. So we're on that. Now we're going to change the blend mode of that to Vivid Light. So go to the drop down again and go down to Vivid Light. Now the image looks pretty funky right now. Don't worry about it. Make sure you're still on that top layer that's inside that group. We're going to invert it. Hit Command-I on a PC to invert it, I for invert, or Control-I on a Mac. Or, I'm sorry, Command-I on a Mac, Control-I on a PC. That sounds better. And once you do it, we're right back where we started. Now what we want to do is we want to convert this layer to a smart object. Now this step is optional, but I do suggest you do it. Just right-click right on the layer, go to Convert to Smart Object. The reason why you want to do that is because the next filter we add to it, if it's not a smart object, once you click OK on the filter, it's baked in and you won't be able to uh, modify it at all. If it's a smart object, you'll be able to go back in and readjust this filter. And the filter we're going to use is surface blur. Now it may be counterintuitive. Why are we adding blur to achieve detail? Well, remember, we inverted that layer. So any, we, any filter we have, we add to it, will do the opposite of what it's supposed to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to Filter, down to Blur, and down to Surface Blur. And there's probably some settings from the last time I used it, and it's going to do that to the image. Now, one thing you should be aware, Surface Blur of the filters that are in Photoshop is probably the most processor and... Um, you know, intensive, so it's going to have that spinning wheel a lot as it processes. So depending on your computer, it may be really slow. Now I'm going to, just with those settings there, let's do a before after. There's before and there's after. You can see how it really does a nice job of just bringing out that detail. Now as far as the radius and threshold, these are really going to vary depending on your image. The resolution of the image and how much blur, you, or in this case blur, but how, how sharp do you want it? And um, also, what, you know, what is in the image? Uh, you're probably not going to um, sharpen like a portrait quite as much as you might a macro. So it depends. What I found is usually uh, for both of them, a number between 15 and 30 works best. If you start getting bigger than 30, you might start, might start to get some haloing. Uh, right now with these settings, actually it looks pretty good. 18 and 31, there's... Uh, before and there's after freaky amazing detail by Calvin Hollywood when you're done click OK now again you'll get that kind of spinning thing and it's gonna do its thing over here now once it's done 
If you're looking at it and go, oh, I didn't add enough or I added too much and you want to readjust it, that's why we created the smart object. Right here where it says surface blur, just double click right on that and then it will open it back up and you could come back in and readjust it. So that's why you want to make sure that you make that top layer that's inside that group a smart object so you could come in and readjust it. So there is Freaky Amazing Detail by Calvin Hollywood. Give it a try. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.